Cheers, and welcome to Fireside Philosophy on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve, and I'm here today with Mike. Hello. Kevin. Hi. And Matt. Cheers. Um, today we're drinking Stone IPA, kind of a staple around here. Um, what do you think about it, Matt? Patron tequila. Good as always. <laughs> Hadn't had it in a while, actually, but tastes good as always. And you drink a Patron? Yes. What do you think? Excellent. <laughs> Very nice. No complaints about Patron. <laughs> You're drinking something different, Mike. Uh, yeah, I am uh, dark as the night. Guinness, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll get a check right now that I won't have it. But no, it's really good. I've always been a big fan of Guinness or anything that I can't see light through. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now, you know, their recipe is different. Here than it is. In Unfortunately, yes, it is. Is that if oh, you really? go to Ireland, yeah. it will be ten times more delicious. Have you ever had one of those bartenders, uh, you know, on tap make a little four leaf cover on your beer? Yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, so we're here today talking with Kevin. Uh, Kevin was with Liberty Dollar. Uh, when when did that? Well, I started in two thousand four. Okay. Uh, Liberty Dollar started in two, uh, nineteen ninety eight. Bernard von Nauthaus started it. And uh, he was doing it for a number of years, and uh, I heard about this being another form of currency. I go, another currency, really? And uh, someone dropped one in my hand. I go, wow, one ounce of silver. I used to be a coin collector when I was a kid. and thought, wow, that's beautiful. What do I do with it? Try it out. See if you can use it locally. So I did, and people loved it. And uh, so I want to find out more about it. Went to a training that they were offering, and people from around the country came uh, to know all the uh, legal ramifications about using something that's new like this. And one of the first things they recommended was to talk to your local police. <laughs> you know, right. So there's no hard or wrong um, understanding about what's yeah. going on. Okay. So was, shortly after I got back, I went to my local uh, police chief and uh, the sheriff and told them what I was doing. And uh, they actually, uh, when I went in to see the uh, uh, public relations officer, he double booked and had somebody else from the Better Business Bureau show up. Mm. Mm. And he said, well, I can't promote you, what you're doing, but you're not doing anything wrong. I already checked with so, uh, Secret Service. Oh, oh they, already, they, they, already, wow. they already talked to the Praetorian Guard, Yeah, because huh? I <laughs> made sure to... You know, yeah. I, I left some information with them a week before when I set up the appointment so they could do their research and that. And he was the former chief for Asheville City Police. And... Uh, he said, well, uh, could you send out a circular or let your officers know? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. So uh, ever after that, for the next few years, when I saw police or I went to the station chiefs, I would go in there and show them what I was doing. Did you read your circular? Uh, there's what it was talking about. And would drop one in their hand. And Oh, okay, yeah, interesting. And went to the uh, um, sheriff and the main, like the deputy sheriff, chief de deputy sheriff, um, said, you know, back in, uh, what was it, 1978, I sold my silver for, you know, $60 an ounce. I think this is a great idea. Then how come, shortly after that, people started coming around. I didn't know how it is that they, they found out about me. Apparently from the paper, there was a front page article going into great deal about what mm. it was about. And somebody showed up and started asking questions. And that was great. How did they, they knew found out about it from the paper cool well later i found out that she was actually an undercover agent oh. who was looking oh, into man. stuff that was going on Gross. and i started hearing uh i had up to you know when i was done a hundred businesses in Asheville who were willing to accept this on a voluntary basis it was in the news uh, i was twice on the local tv station uh, uh radio tele um uh, newspaper all of that i've heard Asheville is pretty pro-liberty Generally, anyway, right? Yes, it is. It's a very um, uh, lip um, left type town, but there is a lot of progressive uh, folks there. Um, it's kind of sister city with Austin. Keep it weird, <laughs> right? And uh, so uh, then uh, it was uh, not until 2007 that we got a warning from the U.S. Mint. The use of the li now listen to the, the terminology. The use of the Liberty Dollar as legal tender can land you five years in jail and a $10,000 fine. You're right, but we don't use it as legal tender. Yeah. Legal tender is a specific legal term that means that which is not backed necessarily by anything, 
but is legal to use. This is money, this is lawful money, according to the Constitution, as is supposed to say a certain purity and weight as uh, specified in the Constitution. That's what it says, this is yeah. Not legal tender, we, we were distanced ourselves from legal tender, and they're not coin, because coin is <laughs> silver pieces that are with specific um, markings from the government, and a certain weight and purity are put into circulation as money. There are no coins in the United States. So the key word... There are no coins. Because so the, the U.S. Mint pieces, one-ounce pieces, they are not put into circulation as money. They say one dollar on them. So yeah. for, for those watching, well, the, key, the key word is rounds, right? So you don't get yourself... Rounds, rounds. medallions. Medallions. Um, circles, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, I heard of the, it's not coin. Yeah. Not coin. There was a... There was a a casino in Re or in uh, Las Vegas, this is maybe ten years ago now, who was paying their their employees in in gold coins. Nice. And dun, dun, dun. and putting on putting on the on their IRS Tech. forms the the printed dollar notation on the coin. So they are charged with the face value that right. it says rather than the monetary value in exactly. terms of gold. Right? Well, they got sued by the IRS. Didn't they get screwed over? Well, they won the case, actually. Yes. Because yes. They couldn't I heard they won the case. Because they couldn't determine at what point in all of these transactions do you say what the taxable value is. They hadn't made a determination. Yeah. And doesn't it say in the Constitution that, cons that the Congress can... Uh, Say what the value is of the coin, and well, it says the the pieces have to be um, a certain weight and purity, okay, and uh, we don't have any like that because the um, the Liberty Dollar was did not have government marks on it, right. so they weren't coins either, right? right. And what we use use now for currency is not backed by anything. I mean, there's only about what three percent of the cash in circulation yeah. is actually dollar bills the rest is just digits floating around in the <laughs> yes. ether and then the sil uh, what are pennies or zinc uh, copper plated zinc copper and, coated you, mm -hmm. you can get yeah, you can get some sandpaper and rub so off that copper right? yeah it's pretty bad yeah isn't it so worthless now that they're even losing money on those yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so shortly after that uh, the US mint warning a uh, liberty dollar sued them for slander and libel because hmm. You're making a false okay. representation here. You're besmirching the name of the Liberty Dollar. This on the Liberty Dollar is a federally registered mint mark. They, they, uh, the founder went and had all, did all his groundwork. And uh, so as soon as it came up to um, the uh, federal court, the judge or uh, the opposition, the, the government wanted to have it dismissed. The judge says no. Uh, he denied their dismissal. I think this should go forward you know, for on a civil case. But what ended up happening is that the f the feds slapped a criminal lawsuit on us, and then criminal suits Trump, you know, have to go first before any civil uh -huh. ones. And that's how it got all tied up because they were ready to lose. Wasn't a dollar traditionally an ounce of silver? Am I correct? On it, that? Was, it was. It was almost uh, originally yeah. after it was. Well, it was named uh, after a, Spa a Spanish sp mill dollar. Yeah, mm -hmm. which goes back to. The taller. So, so why is yes, it that it, the state that is here is trying to determine what a dollar is, and they're calling it a piece of paper now? That's quite a. Well, the issue. <laughs> what, what came up? <laughs> it's funny to me. There's you something. Know, it's hilarious. Yeah. There's something called the legal tender laws that were passed back in the uh, early, well 1900s, 1898. It was. It came in and then it was uh, thrown out by the then sitting judges and. Um, they nominated more judges to the Supreme Court yeah, than remember. normal. And so the same people who voted no last time voted no again, but now there were more people. They stacked the Supreme Court. Yeah. And then they, when it, the legal tender uh, cases came up, the case came up again, they said, yeah, Federal Reserve can make legal tender, right? And that's how it got stuck. But so this must have been after 1913 then? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyways, how, what, how things played out was that they said I was counterfeiting. Uh, counterfeiting? <laughs> Did Wait I a minute. say these for dollars? Yeah, right? Uh. Yeah. Uh, most of that which was seized in 2007 
had Ron Paul's face on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even dead yet, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. And there's a, that, that, that's a rule for U.S. currency or something, isn't it? That like it hit the person on the on the face of whatever bill or coin has to be deceased? Or am I thinking about stamps or something weird? Like no, that? I think well, you, I think you're right. I oh, think yeah. it has something to do with that clause about nobody. Uh, no royalty in yeah. America or something oh, like that. Oh, okay. No, no yeah. Title of yeah. nobility, blah, well, blah, blah, right. something on parchment. Well, the crux of the argument was something, a, a legal term called similitude. What is similar? Okay? And, you know, um, you two guys are similar. <laughs> you got one head, two arms, two legs, one nose. There's <laughs> so many things. Can you tell them apart? Obviously. I would think so. Similitude. So they compared the Liberty Dollar in, the, in the, all the legal wranglings, to so many things similar to U.S. coin. It's round. It's flat. It's silver. It's got <laughs> USA on it. You know, a lot of things. It have has a, a woman's a face on it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of these things. And, and they had a so-called expert that came in and said, oh, yes. Sounds like silver species. should have been a... Uh, should have been something that's yeah. dissimilar. They're not using silver anymore. But the main reason, <laughs> the main reason yeah. why it is they went after us is not because of the counterfeiting. It was because uh, I heard from uh, the, when we had that big article in the paper after the U.S. Mint's warning that uh, Liberty Dollars were allegedly illegal, is that the local reporter in Asheville talked to the U.S. Mint spokesperson and asked them, what's going on here? And she said, well, uh, Liberty Dollar, um, th they say that there's uh, $20 million in circulation. If there was just a small amount, that, that'd be all right. Oh, so if it's a small amount, it's legal, <laughs> and if it's a lot, it's illegal. And how much By their is own a admission. lot, and how much is a little? Wow. <laughs> it had to do with it was starting to become successful. Yeah, it exactly. was starting to realize. It was with Ron Paul's face on it. There was a big push for Ron Paul. That makes a, lot a of whole sense. bunch of stuff going on. They thought we don't want this getting out there. Bingo, but, bingo, yeah. And so, uh, so what did they do in the actual? Um, criminal stuff against me is they charged me with counterfeiting. And these the local papers, in his face is 45 years in jail. Jesus God. Christ. Yeah, right. <laughs> because of the high dollar amount, it was conspiracy, right? Because it was, uh, I was doing it and others were doing it, so they right. called it conspiracy and money laundering and wire fraud, of course, for anything dealing with illegal activity, anything you do is considered illegal also. So, uh, so the defense asked for discovery. That's where you ask for what kind of documents that you have um, against me. Well, that took a while because all of the documents were in a form, a digital form that's proprietary to the FBI. Here you go, 4.2 million <laughs> pages of documents with no searchable format. Uh. Surprised it wasn't <laughs> encrypted. <laughs> Here's they, that information you need. By the way, it's encrypted, but good luck. Here it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A third of it was uh, involved some other guy who was a Patriot fella, had nothing to do with our case. So we'd reduced it to 2.7 million pages. It still would have cost or uh, taken 16,000 uh, attorney hours just to go through it because you had Jesus. to open up a page, read it, close it, and go on to the next. Uh, wow. If you printed it out, it'd make a stack of paper 40 stories high. So what did they do? Uh, well, first they offered me a plea. Right. Of course. <laughs> hey, right. man. We're putting Tell 40 years what. on you. Yeah, right, well, the jury yeah. came to me. Oh, they made a great offer now. You should take it, really. 14 months. Uh, that was nice. Drop down from 45 yeah. years. <laughs> That's quite a drop right there. That's how they get you with their plea deals. Though. Yeah. I've like, been in for six months, right? Yeah. And they said, and I said, you know, but I'd be lying. I never intentionally wanted to defraud anybody, anybody, and the police knew it. Subpoena them and have them come in and testify under penalty of perjury what I told them. Well, right. right? Yeah, like, like well, the, that's just the yeah. thing, though. The, and why did they not take any action? Don't what? they know what the laws are? <laughs> and they check with the Secret Service. Yeah. Right? And the damn county sheriff, like, you, you talk to him, and he's like, oh, yes. okay, yeah, silver, got it, cool. I asked him you at know, that time, like, so what happens when the economic situation of the people go down? Yeah. Does crime go up? Oh, yes, there's a direct correlation. This is something that helps local. We keep moving money moving around here so that the local people benefit. He didn't have much to say about it. Anyway, so uh, uh, two months later, 
They offered me a six-month plea. I'd already been in for eight. <laughs> That's how you know you're doing good when they start lowering it. You're just like, yeah, all right, gambling for months. money. Six months now. Let's keep going. Yeah. But I'd still be lying. Right, how do you know yeah. which way you're gonna go? Things are gonna go when you start lying, especially to the Matrix. You so know? Yeah. Been go in for eight, eight, and they offered you a six. Yeah. How do you get that two months back? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, you gonna pay me for the months I'm I know. No. Do I get a couple grand for that or what? And I would have had a felony, and they would have deported me oh, back yeah, to Canada because no. I'm still Canadian. Okay. Fighting for the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it took them another year before they spent another seventy-five thousand dollars just to put everything up on the cloud, right, on the internet, to make it give it put it into a searchable format. And they didn't have anything. It was all taken out of context. There was another undercover agent that was take, you know, filming it, and if you parsed it out and took words from here or there, it might have uh, <laughs> crabbled it together to make some kind of accusation. Yeah, if you edited it heavily anything. and then played Scrabble with it, they would have <laughs> had you, right? Yeah. So, so then, you know, uh, you know, another few months go by and Bernard's trial came up, Bernard von Nauthaus, and I don't know what kind of jury he got, but they convicted him after a two-week trial. And uh, he's, it's been three and a half years and they still haven't sentenced him. So, what? yes, yeah. it's crazy. It just, is, yeah, they they don't been, have a case. Yeah, no, he's been in limbo for a very long time. If Speedy I remember trial the story that, correctly, right? but <laughs> I will, one thing I will never forget for the rest of my life, and this is, this is when I was kind of getting back into the, you know, the, the liberty movement and, and becoming more knowledgeable about it and strangely enough running for office. And but that's a different story. Um, I remember when he, you know, when the trial was over, or technically the trial was over, and the DA, the, the, the federal DA, you know, she does a press conference afterwards, and she goes, well, what Mr. Von Outhouse was doing was, get this, never forget this for the rest of my life, was a quote-unquote <laughs> unique form of domestic terrorism. And it was one of those things where I almost just, like, walked out of the house and be like, oh, my God, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore sort of thing. Like, it was nuts. A unique form of domestic terrorism is what they call this, you know, dude. Somebody who's trying to promote local currency exactly. with something that's value-based yeah. and not backed by nothing. Yeah. So uh, after he was convicted, they came to me and said, will you take anything? Because <laughs> they didn't want to go to trial because my attorney, she was the top lady for the Federal Defenders of Western North Carolina. She was ready to fight it right. you know, with all she had. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were ready. I had been waiting like 22, 23 months. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, they love a fight. You know, should I go in there? And then what? What if I win? Are they going to get nasty with me, put me on the no-fly list, plant drugs on me, or do whatever? They'll definitely put you on the no-fly list for sure. And they already, <laughs> got, they already got who they really wanted. Yeah. So they offered me a $300 fine. Dun, dun, no dun. jail time. I just had to wait almost two years for it, but no jail time. Three hundred dollars. A petty a fraction. Let me something? read it. He's note? got it on him. It's this, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what they said. They dropped all the other charges. I didn't. Uh, I didn't um, to plead to anything else besides the three hundred dollar fine. That's it. No other deals. So uh, William Kevin Ennis did possess with the intent to sell, give away, or in any other manner use without the authority of the Secretary of the Treasury. Oh. <laughs> oh. You, did, you didn't oh, ask permission. The <laughs> oh, Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> or, or other proper officer. Oh, proper <laughs> officer <laughs> of the United States. Any token, disc, <laughs> or... Or device in the likeness or similitude as to design, color, or inscription thereof of any of the coins of the United States. A petty offense. If you did a, <laughs> if you did a criminal background check, it wouldn't even show up. Right. The, the uh, bureaucrats didn't even understand what a petty offense was because they never see it. It was sitting in their office for a week. I said, what's going on after my plea? See, what's going on? Oh, P.S. Petty offense. Oh yeah, I forgot what that means. So my case number <laughs> well, yeah, was zero 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 one. It's the only one that this magistrate has ever bought because I had to go wow. before the magistrate after wow. there, and he kept on asking me all the way through it. You know, do you understand? Do you understand? And my attorney leaned over and said to me, 
He keeps on asking you whether you understand. I don't think he understands. Because <laughs> <laughs> they never see that sort of case, right? So uh, I haven't been hassled with them. And they, I went back and um, saw Agent Andy Ro Andrew uh, Romagnolo, a little guy. He's about five foot four, and my my attorney is five foot eleven. And every time she goes into court, she always wears big high heels to so look down. So at she's it. like six one, six two <laughs> yeah. on heels. Yeah, okay. Right. Fair enough. And uh, he gave me back my laptop, and I said, uh, "Did you leave anything extra on my laptop? You know? <laughs> oh, oh no, we no, don't. No, get... never, never. <laughs> we would never do that." <laughs> <laughs> this laptop no. scares me now. <laughs> no, I completely. It's yeah. one of those things where they're like, we'd never do that at all, ever. <laughs> we say, totally wouldn't fuse something to your computer. <laughs> we don't give anything. We only take it away, is what he said. Oh, well, but I totally erased the hard drive and changed the BIOS and everything. So oh, I, wow. I, it runs on Linux now. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, what anyways, they. Like? Huh? What was jail like? Boring. <laughs> jail was boring That's nothing good. to do i mean i had to be very proactive to keep my wits about me you know working out every day doing yoga and meditation fasting silence books that people from around the country sent i was very grateful all, all you people out there who sent me books it was wonderful and the letters that came from a outfit called mail to jail up in new hampshire where yeah, you can oh, email. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Wonderful. Uh -huh. People get email. Who writes letters these days? You know, they emailed them. They would print it out and mail it to me. Then I could write a letter in response. They'd scan it and email it back to the people. It was wonderful. And uh, people sent me commissary uh, uh, money for my commissary to be able to have some other kind of healthy stuff. But uh, county jail is not like prison. The people, when they were finally uh, sentenced and gone, went to prison, they go, yay, I'm going to prison, and they're dancing <laughs> around because commissary was cheaper. They, you can go outside every day, and you can have visits, uh, you know, for the whole day from uh, your loved ones, you know. Some states, you can even have conjugal visits. Nice. Oh, wow. I think in California, actually. <laughs> not <laughs> not no, no, North Carolina. It's, you know, buckle of the bell, Bible belt down there. <laughs> but... Uh, Anyway, so what goes on here with the way the law is, is they twist around the interpretation of, law, of the rules, the procedure. Oh, yeah, you can have a speedy trial. Here you go. Oh, but we can't give you the software in order to look at it. You're going to have to figure <laughs> it out yourself, right? Runs out, and then your, your, the federal defender's offices run out of money, or it takes a long time. Meanwhile, the guy's sitting in jail all this time, and they're leaning on him to uh, do a plea deal and they get a longer and longer record yeah. over time. You know? It's like, so how can we use that to turn it into something in our favor? Understanding more about law is just about looking up, uh, reading Supreme Court decisions and looking up term terms, knowing legal terms. And you can understand law that way. Start looking at it, okay? And what I'm doing now is I'm helping people understand how to read better. Because English, you know, one of the, uh, important things about law is precision in language is fundamental to law. Yep. You uh -huh. know, entire cases can hinge on the meaning of a word, like is, right, Mr. Clinton? <laughs> right? And so... How do you define thigh? <laughs> yes, right. Or yeah. Sex with that woman. Only when it comes to the defense, though, not when it comes to the government. When it comes to the government, they say they can do whatever they want. That's the difference. It's precise when it comes to them coming at you. But when they're defending, oh, no, yeah, no, they were right the whole right. time, every yeah. time. Right. Well, uh, so you can use some of that now. I've, I've been helping people understand how to stand up to the banks, who are the real power brokers behind the corporations, behind the government, behind the media, education systems now, the medical, who provides and determines what the value of the money is. So if you know how to deal with the courts and with banks, we change the way we are going to be making our society. So, if, but, and then we can use this understanding to be precise amongst ourselves with kind communication, with, you know, uh, owning our, um, our values and our things that are important to us and saying so. So with mm -hmm. the whole foreclosure issue, it, it's still, you know, it has not stopped. The foreclosures are still uh, going rampant around the country. I'm helping people understand that they can ask the banks for certain papers and demand certain levels of evidence 
that they are not able to fulfill. Yeah. If you it's keep been, it's on been going. Trans, it's been transferred to so many different parties where you're like, hey, so where's the actual title to this property? And they're just like, ah. They really look don't up, know. Yeah. Well, look up um, foreclosure fraud. Uh, well, I've 60 heard, minutes. I've heard of banks foreclosing on homes that they didn't even own. Yeah. That or that somebody's paid any, off. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. just like, oh, we got this confused with something and blah, blah, blah. And oh, no. But but even when it's pointed out, they're like, so what? <laughs> <laughs> you know? A lot, so, you, a lot of times you have to take them to court to, in order to... And, and you know, that costs you lots of money. Yeah. But a bank's like, we print this shit, so... <laughs> there was one smart lawyer who went in and was going to foreclose on the bank. I heard about <laughs> that. Yeah. And yeah, they said, yeah. what does he want? He wants a check for this money that uh, they are owed. Then pay him. Because <laughs> they were there with the sheriff. Yeah. They foreclosed. So this is something I've sent up. Uh, I sent out to a lot of people in and around this area. I stand up the banks. You can too. Is your bank being honest and fair with you? Search YouTube. 60 Minutes News explains foreclosure fraud. It's a real eye opener. No, I am not interested in buying your home or for you to sell or refinance it. You have better options. By understanding and acting on their consumer protections, people across the country are standing up to bank dishonesty. Time is of the essence in legal matters. Call me. Mm. All right? Straight to the point. Yeah. That's it. And uh, what's happening is that people are realizing, wow, hey, I can use legal procedure for my benefit. And we right. can too through, after a while, they get, they get tired of it. Let's, uh, there's a very interesting guy called Richard Cornforth. He says, let's just file a million lawsuits. Let's clog up the courts. <laughs> Doug right? Stanhope yeah. and the, the bank's idea is similar to that. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty good one. Sure, and keep <laughs> after yeah. them. But the problem right now is that it ta costs so much for an attorney to do this, even though you think it's right, yeah. that it's not worth your time and money to do that, mm -hmm. if they'll even take it and don't flip over to the other side like any mer mercenary. Right. You know, yeah. you have to get some, somebody who's knowledgeable and courageous is willing to risk their bar license to stick up for you. Mm -hmm. And then come to our side and educate people about the law, and they'll make, be doing a whole lot better. Because yeah. their, their time is numbered also in terms of the, uh, the Titanic sinking and people not entrust, trusting each other as far as the courts are concerned. We can establish other means of litigation, other means of conflict yeah, resolution. Absolutely. A jury of our peers, guys, yeah. right? Our 12 people. So you're saying you the know, lawyer? Common law grand juries are, go are taken off. Are you saying that the lawyers have the choice to either help people onto the lifeboat or continue to play the violin? Like they've yeah, got, right. You know, okay, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> All the while, it's sinking, you know. So, uh, and then you can understand hey, where change, personal change really takes place is with courage. When you're ready, even though it may, you may be nervous about it, doing it anyway, you know. I mean, people may be nervous about speaking in public, or singing in public, <laughs> or dancing, but stand up in front of a judge and tell them and know how to say what's right is uh, takes a little courage. <laughs> so, so the question I have oh, is, I know. Is, is that so? If you have a house that's foreclosed on, mm -hmm. and you oh, were the foreclosures in process. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah, the foreclosures in process, and you just so happen to pick up a, uh, you know. Uh, Android courtesan, would she accept a Liberty dollar in exchange for sex? <laughs> what year is this? Yeah. Well, right. I, I mean, I don't know. It just right. depends on like yeah. the future exactly how we're going to do this. Yeah. Like, what like hope is there for the well, yeah, I mean, That Android. might be a little bit awkward to be like, here's your coin. Where do I Here's our about? segue. <laughs> <laughs> Which slot do I put it in? <laughs> or do I just put it in the palm of your hand? I there don't are know. a few choices, but, is there? Hey, right. there's, all, there's Bitcoin too, guys. Yeah, okay, so that would not be near, anywhere near as awkward. Right, yeah. Yeah, it'll be by so. Bluetooth. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go... Into the deep into that sex. topic. <laughs> but maybe Never next deeper week. into that topic. Never get into robot sex. But one day, <laughs> I promise you, we'll do it. We will robot one sex. day. We'll be an episode. Maybe one. next week. Maybe next maybe week. Maybe next week. We never know. Uh, how's your time? We'll try to get to it. Have a good night. Cheers. Have a good weekend. <laughs>